Hey, 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 y'all, hey. This is T here with T Triple M. So, we are looking at an ottoman that was given to me for free by a family friend. It's in great shape. I, I just don't like the color. It's actually a pretty big. It's two by four, and then it's almost two inches high. Uh, I am going to um, kind of turn it into a boho ottoman. Um, I got my supplies over here. And I bought this throw. Zebra print throw from the thrift store. It was half off of what? $5.99, so $3. I am going to drape it across here and turn this into a zebra print ottoman. Hopefully it comes out well. I'm not a professional upholster. Um, I have some things here that I'm going to use. I got some upholstery thumbtacks. I got some upholstery type nails. I got regular nails. I have a clamp, scissors, some yarn, and a really big needle. What else? I have a thimble, a couple of different types of thimbles, and then I've got some curved needles. And I got my needle threader over here. So, I am going to attempt to change this ottoman. Wish me luck. So, like I said before, it's a ottoman is in pretty good shape. And let's get a kind of a look at what it'll look like. Get the mm, it's gonna look pretty. Yeah, I just gotta set it down. The trick with this ottoman is going to be the fact that it has a fold. It has a fold. It doesn't come off. It's just, <laughs> it's sewn in there. So I'm thinking I'm going to sew over it, staple it at the bottom, and then maybe put a decorative string around this area where the fold is. It's really nice, well made, and uh, we're gonna see how it turns out. Okay, I just played my last taping and apparently I am not talking loud enough. So I got it draped over top and already you can see that it's gonna look super cute. Um, and I want to save as much material as possible. It looks like there's at least two feet at the other side left. So I could use those few pieces later to maybe make a pillow. See how much is left on this side. So I have it all the way on this side out and basically it's to the far right corner using up that part of the material so I can save some for maybe a pillow or something like that. Okay, so to get an idea of kind of how taut I want this to be, I got a piece of string and I am going to sort of wrap it around down towards the middle where that fold is and I'm going to kind of tie it off and see how much I need to do to the top of it to make it not too tight so it doesn't rip. I don't want it too tight and I don't want it too loose. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm, on, I'm actually going to sew. <laughs> I'm going to sew. I don't know. Can you see that yarn? See the yarn I tied around the side. 
I guess it kind of went in the crease. It kind of went into the crease. Can you see that? So that's kind of like how it's going to be. Okay, so keep in mind, I am not a professional and I'm just winging it. But I am artistic. And so I have these ideas about how it's going to look. And I think it's going to look really pretty. And the thing about being artistic, trying something for the first time, even if it turns out imperfect, people won't know. And they might think that's what you wanted to do. And uh, I think it's going to look good no matter what. <laughs> so I have been putting pins all around, regular sewing pins, all around to kind of make it a little more taut. About every 8 to 10 inches. Just kind of straightening it out a little bit. Um, just so it kind of stays in place. And what I'm going to do is I have a needle and, and some yarn here. And I am just going to, I'm going to sew all along the already ridged edge here. All along the whole thing. So I'm just going to start, you know, from somewhere. And pull it through. Like that, and just kind of do it like that all the way around. It's going to show, and I think it's going to look really nice and original and bohemian. And then kind of pull it a little bit. <laughs> Come on, through. it's because it's two pieces here thick when it first comes through. You see how that's going to look? It's going to be really pretty. Just kind of find the little edge here and put the pin through, pull it up, come on, and I guess it needs two hands, and just do that all the way around along this edge here. All right, I got my thimble <laughs> to help me push it through. So we'll just do some more. I'm kind of doing it at an, a diagonal, at a sort of an angle. Hmm, it's still hard. Hard to push through all this material. I'll push that thimble in there. Pull it up, apparently both hands. Okay. Like I said, I'm not gonna do it like really, really tight because I don't want it to rip. All right. So maybe every, I don't know, look at that, about an inch and a half. Two fingers, two and a half fingers. Go on. If I wiggle it, looks like it'll go through better. Alright. Coming around this corner. I'm going to have to use more string eventually because I didn't want to do a long thing of yarn. Alright, we're just going to continue around the corner. Okay, so I'm at a point where I need to add some more yarn. And you're probably wondering how I can get the yarn through such a small needle like that. I have a threader. Ooh, I don't think you'd be able to see this. <laughs> it's a little wire threader. So what you end up doing is taking the eye of the needle. Let's see. Come on into focus. Here we go. Right, the eye of the needle. 
and then I put the threader through it. These usually come with sewing kits, this little threader. And then you put the yarn through that. And I just use a little bit, I just go in a little bit in there. Put the yarn through just a little because it's hard, it is hard to pull it through that eye. And then just pull it through like that. And it's threaded. I love this thing. Can't be without it. So that's how you do that. And then I have this last little piece here. I'm just going to tie some more on it. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. Tie some more on there. And, um, you know, if it shows, it shows. Like I said, this is an artistic, art, artistic, <laughs> artistic endeavor. So I'm just going to tie this off. Some kind of way, any kind of way. Like that. And, uh, I'll probably cut the little edges and it probably won't show no one's gonna come in and say oh you have a knot right there if they do they're not your kind of people <laughs> then maybe they shouldn't be coming up there we go all right so start with a new piece I'm gonna re-thread it because I took the threading out you can see that. And just put that through there. Just a little bit. Pull it through. And then I'm done with the threader. I always keep it nearby. And then just gonna continue going. Sewing all the way around. To the end. Okay, so we're more than halfway done, and uh, I learned a couple of things that I'm going to share with you. First of all, my hands hurt. They hurt a lot. This is hard work. <laughs> uh, second of all, when you're pulling through, if you pull too tight, you're going to pull this right on out, and then you're going to have to re-thread it over and over again. So, I usually, another thing I learned is, if you grab too much of the material, it's going to buckle and look funny. It's kind of doing that a little bit right here. See? So pull it down taut and then grab it and pull, push it through really close. And then I just kind of pull it. But once you pull it through, then pull slow. Otherwise, you're going to pull the yarn right out. So that's something I learned. And what else? Uh, the corners, I had to get in real tight. Around, around the corners. I kind of had to do it maybe half an inch apart. To make sure I got all the corners in there. And I'm still going about two and a half fingers in. And I started going downward because it's easier to pull down than it is to pull up, I'm finding. See, it almost came right on out again. You pull it on through. Another thing I noticed is once you run out of yarn and you have to add more yarn, make sure you tie the knot right in the middle of where it's going to go through or right at the edge of the last one it's probably better because you can't pull it through if you put the knot and you're trying to pull it through to the next side you won't be able to pull it through so it's a good idea to just tie the knot close to where you just got through sewing like right here Because that way, you don't have to worry about trying to pull it through. And then we'll get the scissors and cut that. And then, I just need to re-thread it. And go all the way down to the end. And, uh, 
keep them here. And then we'll finish up. It's looking really, really pretty. Maybe I'll give like an overview of how it looks. See, when you pull that through, it's also that keeps that tight right there. So that's another reason that's a good idea. All right. Okay. I think I got it this time. <laughs> So you grab it and you kind of want to go behind all of that thickness there. So you go, it's actually so much easier if you go underneath it. So I've gone underneath all that and then you pull it. And then once you're all the way through, you pull slower because otherwise you'll unthread it. Right? Okay. So we're close to the end. We've got a couple of more sew, sewing loops. And I just want to talk a little bit about the needle threader. I got a base where you can see it now. This is the one that usually comes with a sewing kit. Um, but because we're using yarn and it's so much thicker, it's starting to unravel at the end. Um, I have a bigger one. And as you can see, I've been using it a lot. So here's the eye of the needle, and then you just put it through there, and then you got lots of space for the thick piece of yarn. You can fold it up and put it through there like that, hold it, and then pull it through the eye of the needle. It's un starting to unravel because I've been sewing. And you can do it. You can pull it through like that. And then you just take this part off. And then you have it on there. Like that. So I like the thick thread. The yarn. You can get thinner yarn, but I really wanted it to show. I wanted to I wanted it to show um on the outside of the ridges. So let me carefully move this around so we can finish this little part right here. Another thing I figured out is the ridge here, it's been sewn two, three times for reinforcement. And it that's why it's been so hard. That's why my fingers have been hurting. I've been trying to poke this thing through that. So what I've been doing now is I find the ridge and I'm kind of going behind it. So I find the ridge and then I'm just kind of, it's a lot easier when you're kind of behind it. And then you go behind it down at the bottom too. And then you pull it through, hold it here and pull it through. And you stop once you pull it through or you're going to pull it right on out the loop. And then you pull it on through like that. All right. And we're getting to the last part. I'm going to get some more string and tie it on here. And we're closer to the edge. So I can show you again what I was talking about. To if I tie it back here and then I try to pull it, the knot will block it. So if I tie it close to the base here, then I don't have to worry about it not being able to pull through. So I'm just going to finish this last little part here. And then we'll go on from there. Okay. So that took a good 20, 30 minutes. Maybe more. I didn't time it. But we finished with the top part. And it looks great. It looks great. I'm going to come in for a close up. As you can see, I had to go in really tight around the corners. And I like that you can see the stitching. And you cannot see where the knots are unless you look really close. You can see that knot right there. This is all you have to do. And then 
I am going to, thank goodness, no more sewing. <laughs> I am going to um, flip it over and I think I'm going to use the um, industrial thumbtacks for the bottom. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so I got a bit of a challenge here. I got a situation. Um, there's a lot more material left over in the corners. Look at it. So I got to figure out what to do with that. I got to, I don't know exactly, but I think I'm going to straighten it out here and maybe sort of fold it over, cut some of this off and fold it over like that. Hmm. I'm going to have to figure that out because I thought I was just going to be able to turn it over and just kind of nail it at the bottom here. But I'm going to have to do something with this excess. On every corner, there's like excess material. So I have to figure out what to do with that before I can finish. Okay, I thought about it and I have an idea. I got my trusty pins again and scissors. So I think what I'm gonna do is stretch it on the sides here. <laughs> again, not professional. Stretch it so it's smooth at least here. And then I put some pins right there to keep it in place. And on the other side too. And then I'm just gonna try to cut the excess on this corner here. I think this is challenging, folks. This is challenging. I think I'm gonna make it taut right here too. Put the pins right there. So I can just see how much excess material I'm working with. All right, so it's all this. Let's see, I think I'll put some pins underneath here too, because I gotta figure out what's left under there. And on this side. All right. So I I'm gonna cut. First of all, I'm going to cut some of this down here. Now, I do have to have enough to cover over the bottom. So that's going to cover. It's definitely going to cover there. And take some of this out. Let's see. Ooh. How do you do this? We're finding out together. And let's see. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna leave about an inch because I think what I'm gonna do is fold it in half on itself. I think I'm actually not done sewing. Is the idea? I'll show you the idea that I have in my head for this. So I think what I'm gonna do. Uh oh. Hopefully I gave myself enough room. Is I'm going to flip that in on itself and then flip this in on itself and then sew these two together. Just sew them together and have the stitching showing again. 
along these edges. So let's see how that turns out. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is have this side go down like that. This side go over it, but be flipped in on itself. Like that. That's some great material to work with. And, and then I'm just going to kind of stitch that along there. All right. And I am going to sew it onto, onto the ottoman itself. So I'm going to dig into the ottoman. So that it stays down. All right, come on through. Going through a lot of material here. All right, pull it through and leave a little bit to tie off. And Hmm, I'm just going to sew it on. Right here at the corner, got a little crease. I'm going to put a little pin in here to keep it together. So I get to the end of it and just kind of pinch and grab it with a little bit of the material. That's what's making it so hard to pull through because I'm grabbing onto some of the material of the actual ottoman. Maybe I won't do that every time. <laughs> To save my hands because they hurt. It's not easy. All right, so I'll just sew this all the way down to the end, and I'm going to do that on all four corners. Okay, I finished this one side here, and I'm glad I sewed it directly to the ottoman because. That made it lay flat and it won't move anywhere. And I think it looks great. I just got to tie this part off here in a knot. I'll probably tie it on here somewhere along that string. I'm going to put more string along here for reinforcement. If I can find some black ribbon, I might put black ribbon right there. Um, you can super glue this. I don't know if it'll work. You can hot glue it. You can use a uh, staple gun. I wanted to sew it because I like how it looks. And what I'm going to do after I do all four sides, I am going to take the industrial nails that I got. And I think I'm going to... Have them go across. I think there's. Hmm, I have to figure it out. I might have to just nail them to the bottom of this. Just kind of nail it to the bottom. And I'm not going to have it look pretty at the bottom because no one's going to see that. But I'm just going to nail it to the bottom. And along the sides here where the legs are. I'll, I'm going to trim it some more, and then I'll just fold it in like that. Maybe I'll sew the corners. Or maybe I'll just glue gun the corners a little bit. We'll see when I get to that. All right. Okay, looks like I decided to sew it. <laughs> this looks like it's going to be the easiest way. And I'm just, I'm just kind of grabbing and sewing. Kind of grabbing at the bottom here, pieces of it, and just pulling it on through. Good 
just along where the where the leg is and then I will use the just trying to get a pinch of it Down through. So I'll just do that. I cut it real close. And then I'm just going to sew it this way and then kind of sew it that way. And then I'm, I'm going to nail the rest of them onto the bottom wood frame. Oh, okay, we're coming around to the final part. I have put the nails in and I've sewn one side. You can kind of see a little, little knot right there, but I've sewn this whole side in the bottom, and I put the nails around it. I just got to nail this one last side, and then sew the three other sides, and then this is this bad boy is gonna be done. It's gonna look beautiful. Okay. So I just want to briefly show you how I put in the industrial thumbtacks. They're kind of magnetized, which is awesome. They kind of just kind of stay on there. So um, you don't want to hammer your your finger. So what I what I do is I take these clips, take the little clips, and then I put it. In the clip to hold it so as far away from my finger as possible and then I just hit it I just put it in there and then I hit it a couple times and then I let that go and then I just put it in there good so just do that again so you can see the wood is pretty thin on the bottom. It's only to about right here. So I have to do it right at the edge. Like that, hold it, hit it a couple times, and then put it all the way in there. And just keep doing that all the way across. It would be faster with a with a uh, <laughs> staple gun, but I don't have one. So there you go. I'll just do that across the last part and that'll be done okay we are down to the final side oh my hands are killing me <laughs> so I had to resort to a curved needle um, I got it in this it's a weave set it's a curved needle it actually makes it so much easier to do this um, I should have, uh, I should have started with that actually. And, uh, I was pricing these Ottomans for this size, a zebra print Ottoman, anywhere from 200 to a couple thousand dollars. And this one cost me hmm, about 10 bucks, which is awesome. Okay. So this is the last part. It's kind of bunchy up here. So what I'm what I do is I still got the pins in there. I'm gonna take those out and put those right there. And then I'm just gonna move this over as far as you know what this side is shorter. So I'm gonna move this over as far as it can go. And then move this side over it like that hmm I'll fold it up a little bit and then move this over it like that and then this I'm just going to kind of fold it sort of fold it under here that's a lot <laughs> it's a lot of material 
kind of bunch it up. Maybe I can kind of tuck it in there a little bit. And fold that up. No one's going to know. No one's going to say anything. Kind of tuck it in there like that. And then I take the needle and it's so much easier, you're going to see. You just put it in there. I just put it in and I grab, I can tell that I'm grabbing a piece of the ottoman. And then I pull it on through. Let's see here. Move this off of that. Pull it. Come on. It's still hard to do. There we go. And then I take it out all the way. And then I just kind of tie it down to anchor it. And I'm just tying it right here. And then I go back in and cut it. Or I can just tuck it under there. And just tie it two or three times. And then kind of tuck that in there. And then I got to re-thread it again. Put the yarn through. You want to get one of these big threaders, not the little tiny one if you're going to be using yarn. Because even with that, it's still hard to pull through. And then I'm just going to sew the rest of it. I have not been being nice with this. I just dig in, catch a little bit of the ottoman, and come back out on the other side, pull it through, tight, and then go through again, a little bit further down, catch some of the ottoman in there, pull it through. See, it's kind of hard to pull through because it's, it's really thick. There we go. Pull it tight. I'm kind of going back over myself a little bit. I'm taking big chunks because I'm tired. I'm ready for the end result. So, pull it through. And we're down here at the bottom. And I'm just going to go through doing the same thing one more time. You gotta be real careful. You might poke yourself. And that would not be good. Oh, come on. <laughs> there we go. Make sure you catch it when you come through. Or it'll just come right on out the needle. So now we're here at the bottom. And so what I do is I just kind of tuck it under itself. And then this is where the curve needle comes in handy because you can catch a little bit and then catch that part. And bring it on through. You can't really even see the seams, really. Tuck it under. And Catch that. You can see the nails that I did here. And pull that through. You really don't even have to do this part, really. No one can really see under here when the ottoman is down. And then I'm just going to come right back across to the other side. Okay. 
in right here the last stitch just tuck that little part down in there you can pull the string out and I just tie it in a knot I do it about four times so it doesn't come back through one more time and that's it that's it and I tuck it under there we are done okay so this is the finished product it looks great and again in the middle I'm gonna find uh, a stronger piece of string maybe ribbon or something you can see how I just kind of tied it or maybe I'll go around it two or three times with yarn but it looks great I need to cut this little string right here but other than that it looks fabulous less than 10 bucks okay it's not perfect but it looks great all right Hope you guys were coming with me on this journey. Stay tuned for the next video. Please like and subscribe if you like this content. Alright, have a good day.